Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad you're here this morning. Way to, way to went the end of the week on a great show like this on Panhandle Outdoors. We're going to be giving away some seafood today. How about that? Adding some names later, but let's get started with our weather. Brought to us by our good friends up there in Southport, Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard and hardworking crew. We're looking at a high today of 64, a low of 43, and a water temperature remains at a 61. Let's take a look at our river readings. Uh, they're very interesting because we talked yesterday how they're rising, they're still getting high, but they're very close to uh, each other's reading. The outplace code is a 7.8. And the Choctatchee is 7.7. .7. Now that 7.7 .7 on the Choctatchee is a lot higher than it is on the Apalachicola. But it's interesting they're that close. But the water's going to be up in the sloughs this weekend. So if you're going to do some squirrel hunting, you got to get way back up in there. The squirrel hunting's really good in January. Uh, you got to get them pretty good because get, the squirrels get tougher as the winter goes on. My dad never would work, would, would, would not want to skip work. Well, I mean, he never skipped work, but when he got off work, he would go, and he never would go in, in February because the squirrels were tough. Yeah, I bet a lot, a lot of y'all didn't know that. Tide chart brought to you by Kent Forest Lawn. We're looking at a great tide today, January the 6th. We're looking at a uh, high tide this morning, uh, well, a low, 539, and a high this afternoon at 721. Fishing game forecast is going to do it from Blue Water Outriggers. We're looking at uh, one time, 1040 to 1240 today. Okay, good time to go in the middle of the day. It's going to be a pretty day. Yesterday was a pretty day. Uh, wind be coming out of north at about 7. I'll right, take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I'm on the phone with us coming uh, from Carabell, Seacourt and Reno. Captain Kim, good morning. Good morning, man. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to all our good folks down your way. Tell us what's been going on that way. Well, it was a, it was a nice holiday break. Uh, a lot of people didn't have to go to work. <laughs> so yeah. We uh, hung out here on the dock. A lot of the loopers are here from the Great Loop Association, and they've been fishing off the back of the boat, catching uh, some smaller trout than normal, but a lot of catfish and sheep's head popping up here in the river. Uh, so they've been doing, having a lot of fun with that. Basically just some frozen shrimp or a chunk mullet down the bobber. With the uh, full moon coming, so the current's running good, and it'll take that bait farther than you can cast it. Oh, good, good. Well, and what are, what are they using for bait? Mostly the frozen shrimp and the chunk mullet. Oh, that's great. Right here, right here out in front of the office. Now, BB went the uh, day before yesterday, I think, and he's telling me that there's some really big brim in some of the holes up the river, about 12, 20 foot deep. And he caught his limit the other day, so he was real happy with that. Lots of catfish up there, too. Uh, that sounds good. What about the uh, the sheephead? Are they out way out in the bay also, or just up in the river? Yeah, they have been, you know, just about to Dog Island because yeah. it's been blowing pretty good the last few days. So they're pretty much right along the edge of the river. Uh, the pilings and, not, and what have you right there have been real pl plentiful. And uh, there's also, uh, just outside the mouth of the river, um, they've been catching uh, big size sheep's head. I mean, normally they're just, you know, a little bigger in your hand. These are pretty good size, so they've been real happy with that. That's great. I, I guess the go-to bait is fiddler crab. Well, yeah, that's okay. We've got a lot of that in gulp, um, some artificial, but uh, they're pretty much just the frozen shrimp has been real popular. Oh, cool. That's good to hear. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a great report, and it's so good talking to you, and uh, we'll be coming down pretty soon to check on y'all. That sounds great. Looks like we're going to have some nice weather this weekend, so everybody needs to come and get some bait and go fishing. There you go. Thank you, Captain Kim. All right. You too. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Seacourt Marina, been one of our original sponsors. We appreciate them, and uh, they've just been, been good folks down there. It's a unique area, Carabell, the Franklin County area. It's just uh, uh, this is the last frontier as, as far as outdoors in Florida. I, I will say that, and uh, unequivocally, I will believe that. Okay, I've got some things to be caught up on uh, 
I, I, all the input y'all send on the, on the messages and everything, they're, they're real. These are real people doing real things. I just want to share. I got several to share with you. I got this, and they all have been so nice on, when you when you send your entrance in, but saying such kind things. Uh, I'm not that good of a person. <laughs> I appreciate it though. Thank you very much. I, now here's the, this is a good one. Okay, I'm gonna read it to you first, and then I'm gonna show you the pictures. Hey, coach, uh, would you uh, Sam and Charlene saw uh, from West Bay, Sammy Sawell and Charlene, uh, the family have been up there since the beginning of Southport. They've been up there since generations. Okay, he won a bow from C&G, okay. And, uh, the, the big thing, uh, when Nate Taylor was here with C&G, they were gonna give away a bow, and, and uh, Sammy entered it from seeing Nate on the show. Uh, when, okay, I, I gave a bow to my great great nephew who is 10 years old. When you do something good for people, they will remember you. He has twice brought me squirrels already clean. This past Monday, he brought me 17 squirrels. Here's a picture of him and his care of younger people taking care of older people who can't hunt anymore. He said when he kills a deer or hog, he's going to bring me some of the meat. Ah, right, so here we go. Uh, let me see. Now here's a bow right here. I went back and found my notes on it right here. Okay, here's a bow that he won. Sammy, uh, he, he sent me the picture. It was October 31st. Mr. Chester, it pays to watch your show. Last week, I saw the guy from C&G on there, and it won the, and uh, look who won it, okay, on a bow giveaway. So then, okay, so then he gives it to his great nephew, and look at that. You think he's tickled with it, 10 years old? Learning, and you can adjust the draw. That's the beauty of those bows. You can adjust the draw to it. And, and look at that, practicing. That's classic. I'm telling you, archery is enjoyable at all ages. Uh, look at his bright eyes. And what did he do? He brought his uncle some squirrels. And look, folks, is that some, not some good looking squirrel meat? I mean, skin them whole right there, and they're, uh, that is some good meat, I'm telling you, in the kitchen sink. I, I love it. That, a good fried squirrel, that'd be good for breakfast, wouldn't it? But uh, anyway, that's, that's doing something good for someone else, and uh, I know he enjoyed it. I have several other pictures. If, if you want to get into surf fishing and you don't want to get way down in the water, here's something you can do. You rent one of these uh, lifts and just we're going to cast, cast out there, okay? And here, here's a good picture. This is my buddy Frank Davis from Howard Creek. He did a trifecta he, for Christmas, okay? He has, he has my book at the bottom right here. He's wearing a panhandle, panhandle cap, okay? That's one of our new caps right there. And then he got a panhandle rattler, one of his granddaughters is holding a panhandle rattler. He got a trifecta as far as Christmas gifts from Panhandle Outdoors. So uh, good job, Frank, enjoy, enjoy that picture. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, glad you're with us this Friday morning. Hope you're getting ready for a good weekend. The river's gonna be high. So you might be out in the woods. Speaking of being out in the woods, you know, you often hear uh, the old timers always would cut off the snakehead. They always tell you to be careful because the snakehead can be live. And I saw something the other, uh, other day, in fact, I've seen it twice. Check this out now. Okay, I'm gonna go back, oh, hold on, hold on. I got, a, I got too much technology here. Jeff, uh, just give me a minute. Well, always, anyway, the old timers talk about uh, I'm gonna have to come back to it. I'm gonna have to come back to it. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, look at some pictures. One, one of the things uh, I wanna show you the uh, that quail, we're talking a lot about quail hunting and the situation there. A lot of people don't have property, but I don't know if you realize you can hunt on some wildlife management areas and one of them locally is, is that Prescola area. And here the quail enhancement, uh, quail enhancement areas provide hunt opportunities. And here are the dates on it, on, on the Saturdays. Uh, it's 7, uh, 14, anyway, 7, 11, 14, 20, about four, four days here, some during the week too, and then February about four days, four or five days. So that's on that place called Wildlife Management Area. And you can actually, you can actually, uh, from my understanding, you can release them in, in that area and then hunt them from what it looks like to me. I don't know uh, if we can get these folks to come talk about it. I know. Uh, they have some wild ones down there, if not enough for everybody, but it'd be cool if you take your own quail down there and just release them. It'd be fun. And, uh, but anyway, the release quail hunts, they're, 
I thought it was just one or two. Look at all the different areas that have the release quail hunt. Uh, I'm trying to find some low reconfiner, pine log. Okay, so this is a, a lot, a lot of places you can do that. So we're talking about quail hunting, not having a place to go is still a, still can be done. Okay, let's uh, let's go into let's go ahead and do some of these names. I got a lot of them today. I want to get started early. Okay, here we go. Tom Martin, Bible George. Tom is recovering. Talk to him. He's recovering from that bad accident. He had a, a motorcycle ran into him. The motorcycle was going 95 miles an hour. T-boned him. Of course, it, it, his fatality as far as his driver, but it hurt Tom real bad. He was in intensive care for a good while, but he's doing okay. He was, that was hit by a motorcycle. We have some crazy drivers out there now. Okay, Tom Martin, Bayou George, Margaret Sherman, Bayou George, Charlene Sowell, West Bay, and Sammy Sowell, West Bay. Good story there, buddy. Uh, Rob Haney, Fort St. Joe, Edith Davis, Howard Creek, Frank Davis, Howard Creek, Karen Edwards, Lynn Haven, Mike Edwards, of the Panhandle Rattler fame, Lynn Haven, Terry Mars, PC. I wish I had time to tell you some Terry Mars stories. He played uh, football here at Bay High. He's around my age. Uh, a good football player, got a scholarship, University of Florida, starting tackle there. He, the reason Steve Spurrier won the Heisman Trophy because Terry Mars was blocking for him except for that one play. I'm going to get Terry to come on the show and tell you about that one play. Lisa Godwin, also good folks over there. Emory Godwin, Panhandle Sand and Gravel. They watch the show every morning. Thank you, Emory. Also is a special place. Faith Davis, I'm, I'm sorry, Faith Owens, Chip, uh, Weewall, Chipper Gaines Weewall, Matthew Griffin, Clarksville, William Jones, Alpha. Hope Ganey from Weewall, Michael Stringfellow from Weewall. Then we've got some viewers in Weewall. How about uh, Amy Bugs up in Ponce de Leon? And Michael Bugs, Ponce de Leon. Terry DeFee up in Honorville, Alabama. He watches on YouTube. Joanne Maxwell, Chattahoochee. Ned Maxwell, Chattahoochee. Chris Upchurch, Weewall. John Teaver, Gainesville, Georgia. And that's a pretty area up there. Pretty sure you're watching on YouTube. Patrick Westbrook, Panama City. Mike Westbrook, Panama City. Uh, Melissa Upchurch, Weewall. Anna Westbrook, Panama City. Candace Strength, Henson Crossroads. Cool place. And Danny Joe Strength, up there, Henson Crossroads. Tommy Hamilton, Freeport. Emily Prowse from Howard Creek and Panama City. They go back and forth to the fish abiding. Uh, Sherman Prowse, they're down at Howard Creek. They're not biting up here in Panama City. Good, good outdoor people right there, I'm telling you. Uh, Stacy McDougall, Lake Victor, up in the Funiac. Uh, try to send me that uh, video if you can. Uh, Mark Bro, uh, I'm going to keep that one out because he just sent me an email where he's from. Uh, Alicia Bro, uh, okay, I'm going to put y'all in a minute. I'm going to write down where you're from. Sheila Miller. Johnny Miller, okay, I don't know where y'all are from. Robert Danron, Gertrude Walsh, Buddy Walsh, A.J. Walsh. I'm assuming all these are Panama City folks. Michael Walsh, Charles Stringfellow, Weewall, and Mary Lee Walsh, and, and then uh, Leela Bugs from Ponce de Leon, okay? And I'm going to add uh, the bro, uh, Mark and Alicia, I'll add y'all, uh, Sheila Miller, I'll add y'all. Uh, I'm going to read an email. Let me go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and take our break now and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's get ready for the first drawing of 2023. You got a good chance because it's not full yet, so you early birds, uh, you only have a chance to get a worm and the seafood, okay? And there's more, I just didn't get all of them. Y'all have been sending them in on a regular basis. It takes a little bit of time. Gail makes a list. I tell her she don't have to. She makes a list of everybody, a separate list, and then she writes out everybody's name. So that's time consuming for her. Appreciate her doing it. The winner of the $20 gift certificate to Tarpon Dock Seafood, the winner is from Lynn Haven, Mike Edwards, the first winner. Mike Edwards, <laughs> okay? 
And the winner of the Big Red Snapper. Big Red Snapper tastes good this weekend. From Bayou George, Tom Martin. That's two of our longtime original viewers, those two guys right there. So, Tom, I'm glad you got to win. I hope, hope you're feeling better. My congratulations. And, and uh, that's a good job. All right, now let's talk about a fishing report. I got a, uh, we showed this fishing the other day with, during the holidays, that trip I went with Jerry Forehand, and we caught all those uh, <clears throat> crappie. And someone wanted to know where we put our, what boat landing we went in. And here it was up in the wall. and here it is, Dead Lakes, uh, this little, area right here, Dead Lakes Boat Ramp, okay? Now go to the left is West Arm, and then you go, that goes on down to Chipotle and all. And so it's, that's a good boat ramp right there, Dead Lakes Park Boat Ramp. Excellent boat ramp and pretty, pretty area. So that's, that's where we uh, went in different areas there. Just moved around and caught, and caught those crappie. Now what I want to talk about, and it, it leads into to what I got from the information I, I got from uh, Caravel, and on uh, sea quarters talking about <clears throat> fishing this time of the year, okay? And, and what you do, you know, those folks, I got a kick, she said they were fishing off the back of their boat and, and catching fish. But what's interesting, I, I, when she talked about sheephead, I'm just assuming, you know, the fiddler crowd, but what did she say? No, dead shrimp. If you could only pick one bait to fish in the water, I think a dead shrimp would probably be it, if you could only get one bait. All the others are great, but a dead shrimp will catch a more variety of fish than anywhere. So last night I wrote down uh, about seven or eight top spots to go uh, sheephead fishing. So I'm going to start over here on the left. I'm going to go in the west end. Now, I've mentioned it before. Here's the Destin, <coughs> Destin Cut. Choctatchee Bay holds some sheephead. It's pretty secretive a lot of times where you catch them, but right there around the bridge pilings, it's going to be really good. And then coming on out of the pass, uh, out of the mouth of the pass, and then around the rocks and all. That's an excellent place to go. All right, move on over. We're going to go from west to east, and I've, I've run this route before. Uh, stopping here at the bridge, these bridge pilings here in the, in the channels, okay, in the cuts and all. Excellent spot to go. All right, so you got the, you got the uh, 331 bridge, and then you're coming over here, the intercoastal, and you always stop at West Bay. Now, I always talk about this because it's always a good spot. Now, I have seen, they've got the barges that are going on right here. Some of the viewers have talked about the mess they're making, and I worried by there the other day. They are making a mess. <laughs> so I don't know how it's going to affect the fishing in here, but the big old barges coming in and washing up on the shoreline, but it's still a, still a good place to go, and uh, you know, hopefully it'll settle down. After West Bay, I came all the way down here to the Hathaway Bridge. You can always catch fish right there on Hathaway Bridge around those pilings there, okay? Now you can up here at Lynn Haven, you can catch them off the Lynn Haven Bridge, uh, not, and there will be some caught. Uh, let's talk about that a minute, Lynn Haven Bridge, because I go over it two or three times a day, okay? On the right is the original bridge, and the city had a foresight to keep that bridge as a walking fishing area, and people ride golf carts down it, jog across it. That is a great idea. Uh, it's safe, but anyway, you can fish off that bridge there, and uh, I'll tell you the best spot, right there in the center, okay? If you can get it right where you can't really see it. But anyway, you put it in the Lynn Haven ramp, or you can fish from the bridge right there, okay? So then, then I went down to our jetties, of course, and I uh, really and truly, the, the boat the captains used to fish here a lot. They've got to where they don't fish here much, simply because uh, it's just too easy to catch them there. And, and uh, they felt like they were just taking too many at one time. So if you fish in there, don't, I mean, don't, don't just uh, catch every one of them you can. Just you know, be judgmental on the ones you catch right there. And moving on down, oh, we're talking about sheep there now. You can catch a few, let's move all the way down. Going toward Port St. Joe. And I hope you've seen the area where uh, Tendall is just building some really neat places. All right. Island View. Always going to be some, always right there in the center of the screen, always going to be some places, uh, folks catching them in those places right there. Uh, it's just deep really quick. And then you can go up the channel a little bit and catch some, but right that area right there is going to be a top area. Now we'll move all the way down to East Point. Honestly and truly, there's not a lot of them in St. Joe Bay. We just haven't caught a lot of them over the years. But once you get in that place called the bay, that's the bay for sheephead. For as long as I remember, uh, that's been a great area. I can remember my dad coming down and fishing off the bridge with his buddy 
uh, driving all the way down just to get sheephead. And I talk about this all the time, getting at East Point, and you have your bridge there. It's just a good fishing bridge, okay? Good, good area to go fishing, and it's really, you can go all the way to the end right here, but you really don't have to, you just go part of the way down, okay? Let's quickly go over to Carabell. The, the eight top fishing spots in the Florida Panhandle. The reports we were getting, okay, well, you heard what she just said, the mouth of the Carabell River, right there in the center of the screen, okay, and then up the river some, and here's the bridge, but now she's talking about the loopers, here, okay, right up in the river, they're actually catching, here's sea quarters right here. They're actually catching them off the back of their boat all through here. It just shows, shows you can catch them all through here. Okay, so anywhere, Carabell River is going to be a really good place to go. Okay, enough on sheephead. I did have some more stuff to talk about. Surf fishing, it, surprisingly, it's been pretty decent. It's all dependent on the weather when you go surf fishing. The weather's going to dictate whether to go or stay home or go somewhere else. And, uh, and we get these stormy fronts coming in, and then it takes a day or two to settle down. But you get that little window of time, they're catching uh, whiting and also catching some redfish out of there and some blues, but mainly the, the target fish now is the whiting. Uh, real quick, freshwater, crappie, if you can get a lake top one, that'll be the crappie headquarters. I mean, there's some great fishing up there. Uh, anywhere, like you saw in our video, crappie fishing is going to be good over in Choctahatchee. I've got some good reports from there, uh, but lake top one is good. Lake Seminole will be good. Bass fishing, uh, the, the bass guys are getting tuned up. They're getting ready for pre-spawn. Bass fishing is really going to start kicking off. Uh, these tournaments will be kicking off in a couple of weeks, and bass fishing should be really good uh, within uh, the next couple of weeks. So that pretty well sums it up for our, for our first of the year, first of 2023 uh, Panhandle Outdoors Friday fishing forecast. So if you get a chance, get out there and take care of it. And uh, send us those pictures, and y'all keep uh, cards and letters coming. Y'all have a great weekend. Enjoy the beautiful outdoors, and, and I appreciate y'all's viewing. God bless you. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.